Okay, hey guys, it's Shannon. I'm trying to get into lately is my own pigments. Um, I make my own makeup and some of that stuff, and so that's kind of where I got interested in making my own acrylic paint. And when I went to YouTube, uh, there was like one video, but it wasn't really making acrylic paint. It was basically coloring white acrylic paint with food coloring, and there was some on oil paint, but none on acrylic. So I did some research and... Uh, Basically, this is kind of what I found, and this is just a video to document me attempting um, to make acrylic paint, basically. It's supposed to be a simple process. Um, I'm going to use this to put it in. Uh, basically, what you do is you get an artist-grade pigment, such as Perlex. Um, mine, I got this at Hobby Lobby. I actually have a lot more pigments and micas, um, because I do make my own makeup. So, um, I'm going to experiment with this, and this is the Duo Green Purple. Um, and after I'm done with this, I want to make, I got a bunch of interference pigments, um, which really that's the whole reason I wanted to get into making my own acrylic paint is because I, when I looked at videos online of different, <clears throat> different art and stuff and I saw people doing things, I kept seeing people do, uh, stuff with Golden's interference, uh, pigments in gold or blue or red or green or whatever that comes in a bunch of different colors. And I thought, wow, it's it's beautiful um, addition to basically whatever you're working on. And they have both a liquid and a harder body um, version of it. So that's kind of how this came about. And I actually have some interference pigment, powdered pigment, um, that's mica. And mine is actually cosmetic grade. Um, but basically from my research online, I, I ordered it from one that it's cosmetic grade, but it can also be used in art, basically, is my understanding. So... Um, after we're done with this, if it turns out well, knock on wood, <laughs> um, then we'll go and I want to make an interference pigment because interference, if anyone has ever bought the interference, um, acrylic paint or, you know, additions or whatever they call it, basically it's clear. It's extremely expensive. It's like $20 for a tube or a bottle that's like this big. And so it's, it's very costly. So my goal is basically to try and create a cost-effective version of that. So we're going to start, though. We're going to make some actual acrylic paint. So what you do is, I do not have the right spatula for this, but I will. Okay, so, okay, so the first step, according to what I read online, is basically you pull your dry pigment out. Oh, and I, okay, and the other good thing with making your own acrylic paint or oil paint. If you're interested in that, I could do an oil paint one because it's fairly similar. It's just slightly different. Um, basically, you pour... Actually, this is way too much. I, I'm not even going to make that much. Uh, the good thing about it is, is that you control kind of how much pigment you can put into it. So you can make different colors. You can make, you know, different... Just different... Different, different paints. Um, and you can kind of control what goes in it, so you know. Um, so the first thing you want to do with acrylic paint is you want to disperse it in water. Well, I read basically some pigments don't disperse well in water. So we're going to try and we're going to see if we can get it to disperse into water. And if not, then, you know, we'll go to the next step, which is to disperse it in alcohol, which I have some here if we need to. Okay. So, and basically what we do is we begin to mix it. Okay, and as you can see, it's kind of sitting on top. So, basically what we want to do is we want to get it to mix. We need it to mull. Mill, mill, grind, whatever it's called. Anyways, we need it to get to kind of a, yeah, here, to the point where it's mixing together. So, I hope you all can see this. Um, how it's starting to essentially mix together, and I read online basically. I don't. I don't have a molar, a miller, uh, because I'm cheap and I'm not spending thirty five dollars. But basically, what I saw said you could also use like one of these metal spatulas instead, as long as it was flexible, so that you could kind of move the pigment around basically. Um, and ideally, you're supposed to do this on a piece of plexiglass or. Um, um, real glass, but again, that's, I'm just not into that kind of investment. This to me is more of an experiment to see if we can do it, which it looks like we can. Organic pigments, um, you have to spray alcohol first. Um, and I have alcohol because I use it for cleaning and 
all sorts of stuff. So basically what you want to do next is you want to take an acrylic binder. And an acrylic binder is just, um, it's basically an acrylic, uh, 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 it can be, well, okay, it's basically anything that's used in acrylics, uh, like a gel medium. I'm just using a gloss gel medium. It could be, um, it could be a gloss gel medium. It could be a matte medium. Um, it could be, um a bunch of things basically. It could be liquid, it could be, um, this is more of a hard body obviously. Um, I do have some liquid. I just didn't want to do a matte because um, I only have a matte liquid medium at this point and I apparently may need to open a new one. Um, and basically, I think I put way too much liquid in this um, but that's alright because we'll, you know, it's kind of a live and learn thing. But, so basically I take my gloss gel medium, and I, I prefer a paint with a little bit of a sheen or a gloss to it, so that's the other reason. And so basically what we're going to do is we're going to start milling it around again, milling it around. And I'm definitely going to have to add more gloss medium to this, because this is just way too fine. Well, with Hey, you don't want air bubbles, so you're kind of doing that figure eight, I think, um, thing. And I'm sure you guys can see it. It's definitely becoming paint. So I, I would say this is, um, and it's, it's basically, I am just kind of, you want to do a figure eight is what it said, but honestly for me at this point it's not working to do that as well. This is, um, working for me. And I'm really actually getting to be pretty happy with this color. And it's definitely like, it's, it's paint. So, um, it's like a beautiful mint green though. Um. And, like, the funny thing is, it's definitely, can you guys see this? It's got a sheen to it. And you can see I mixed it, and it's definitely opaque, because you can't see through it. But, um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. It's got a beautiful, like, uh, pearlescent kind of sheen to it. I'm sure that's partially due to the, I mean, the pearlex type of pigment. It's got the natural metallic sheen to it. Um, I really hope this comes across in the video. Sometimes I know that's hard to pick up. Um, but yeah, I mean, I made paint, and then basically the next thing we're going to do, because I want to save it, I want to use it to paint with, um, I'm just going to put it into this container. Now, ideally what you'd want to do is you'd want to put it into an empty paint tube, but I don't actually own any of those. That's just something that, kind of one of those one day things I'll order that. Um, so. But, for me... Um, this was just an experiment, like I said, but I'm really happy with it so far. Um, I would probably have used more pigment, um, to get, like, a more deeper color, maybe. But, yeah. I mean, I'm really happy with it. And so this is the paint I made. Um, we're going to save it. And it was made from this pigment, which you can see is much... You know, darker. I wish you could see. Let me see if I can turn the light on for it. Here we go. Okay, because it's actually... Ooh, that's way too bright. Now you can't really see the bright color. Um, oops. Ooh, just fluttered into the camera. Um, it's actually really light. Um, the pigment's actually pretty, pretty close to the paint. Um, it's a couple shades maybe darker, but I would expect that. But I'm really thrilled overall with um, how this turned out. I know this was a little long, maybe, but um, I hope you guys like it. And basically the next thing we're going to be doing is I'm going to show you guys how to make interference colors. Because, like I said, I'm not a professional artist, and so I really just don't... I don't want to make the investment to buy the basically the interference colors, which... I really want to use because I love that, <laughs> that, uh, kind of, um, that interference, <laughs> the, yeah, the interference you get basically from it and the kind of, like, slight sheen and color change you get from it. I, I enjoy that a lot in my paintings. I like seeing it in others. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're definitely going to try and, um, we're going to make some interference paint. So, um, stay tuned, and if y'all have any questions or anything, you can, um, just message me, or leave a comment below, um, but, yeah, definitely kind of let me know what you think, 
Um, I think it's pretty interesting. But um, I only made a little bit of paint. But definitely there's potential to um, kind of make it more cost effective for you. And also, I really like the, the control factor. I guess I'm a control freak. And so, you know, I want to see, you know, what we can do and with it. And I really just, I love that. Look at all that shine and beauty. And it's so cool. Um, so, anyhow, I'm probably going to paint something with it right away and play. So, anywho, that's all. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Talk to you later.